This playthrough is rated M for Mature. Greetings and salutations, viewers. Well, we're back here with another episode of Vandal Hearts. In the last episode, we started this adventure, fought some bandits, which is clearly obvious for any first-time first players or whatever. You gotta fight bandits, capture them, and ready to go back to Shumeria. But it sounds like the country is not all, you know, bells and whistles and rainbows and lollipops because uh, bandits have been causing trouble in the valley and and uh, sounds like there might be corrupt politicians and merchants. So it looks like all that effort 15 years ago has already been forgotten. That's probably not as bad as what happened during that time, right? Anyway, before we move on, um, let's check our weapons because we got the uh, longsword for, uh, the, from the previous battle. What we want to do is give this to Clint. Yes, give him two extra two uh, attack and it'll save us some money so we don't have to pay for that. Um, I'll probably end up using the Mad Book at some point in the game. Um, I don't know how long it'll be though because like I said, it's, it's one of those abilities where it's just it will possibly hold a character, and it's not guaranteed to, to work, so, oh well. I don't think I actually have anything in my, in, yeah, I didn't think so. Yeah, this game is one of those games that there's not a lot of good places for getting experience outside of battle, which, the game has a mechanic where you, if you're low level and you end up hit, hurting a guy, or killing a guy at such a, that's higher level than you, it'll give you a lot of experience, so, I don't think you should worry about that too much, but like I said, just keep, a, be aware of your levels. Let me also go to the, uh, skills menu and just show you everyone's abilities and everything like that. Yeah, um, spells wise, obviously, Ash is the only fighter character that gets spells. After that, it's it's wizards, priests, oh my. Um, uh, oh, spoilers, we're going to get more characters. Um, okay, well, anyway, let's go to the capital Shumeria. And yeah, as you can see on that little blip there, you can't go back to old maps and like refight bad guys or anything like that. But like I said, I, I don't think, from what I've seen, the uh, it's not really necessary to level grind, really. The game kind of, as long as you upgrade everyone and level up everyone evenly, you should be fine. First, let's go to HQ and give a report. But I want to go to the tavern. I'll have a drink after we make our report. That'd be funny if you had a, like an angry expression. Anyway, we can go to the shop now if we want to. Um, really, there's nothing I really... I mean, I'll probably end up maybe buying a... Uh, yeah, we can buy staffs. No one in the group can play staffs. Are you spoiling me? Are you doing a spoiler game? Uh, now, if we want to upgrade everyone completely, um, you can buy the longbow for Diego, but we actually won't need to do that for the uh, in the next fight because of, uh, we'll be able to get another one, so we don't have to worry about that. So, I'm going to go ahead and sell that short sword. There's no reason to keep old weapons in this game. Um, I'm trying to remember if there's any exceptions. There might be like one or two exceptions, maybe, but for the most part, there's no reason to keep old stuff. Um, now, armor, we do want to upgrade if we can. Um, because we won't be getting those anytime soon. So yeah, just sell, just sell the old equipment. No reason to keep it. Uh, yeah, it might be minor, but the stat differences will, uh, are, are important. Uh, yeah, let's get some pleather for our fighters here. Yeah, fighters will have their own set of armor as well as, it's pretty much just, there's there's a couple different variations of armor. There's basically helmets, sta or helmet, or, there's basically standard helmets and then other headbands, basically. I'm just going to call them helmets and headbands, as well as leather or or light uh, armor and light armor, basically, is what it is. Oh, and there's little descriptions. Not much. It just says what it is. Um, okay, I guess uh, you use... Usually the fighters will end up... Usually fighters or uh, that will use um, armor, and then light armor will be used by like other units and stuff like that, so... And then we can buy herbs. Okay, herbs are a little bit more expensive at 200. Whoops. Oh well. I don't. I'm gonna be able to get some herbs later on, just from fight, uh, just from chests and stuff like that. So I won't buy one right now. Um, uh, mage oils, um, 4 MP. Really don't need that right now. There will be a point in the game where we'll want to buy mage oils, but that's not today. Um, elixirs, cure stasis. Stasis is like um, poison and stuff like that. Um, poison's actually kind of annoying. You kind of want to cure that when you get to it, but luckily we won't have to deal with poison for quite a few battles. And fire gem, which does a, a fire... Is it? Yeah, it's a type of fire spell. Um, it is powerful, but 2,000 gold at this point? No, not going to do that. Um, okay, anyway. And then before we go to the security office, let's check the dojo. The dojo is important because this game has a mechanic where you can change classes. Welcome to the dojo. What do you seek? I see guidance. Growth. It is the goal of every man to attain the highest rank in his position. After reaching levels 10 and 20, you may come here to learn new skills and strive to find the best in yourself. Hmm. Well, yeah. Every time you hit 10 or 20, well, 
yeah, go to a dojo. Usually you're going to probably level up your class. Well, we're definitely going to level up our class by the beginning of chapter two. And I think the, I think it's by the midway point in chapter three is when we'll be able to upgrade to our final classes, I think, if I remember correctly. Seven powers. The seven classes correspond to the seven powers that Taroa mastered. They are knight, ama, archer, airman, mage, priest, monk, acrobat, barbarian. No, wait, that's the ending. <laughs> Um, you must choose wisely in order to create a well-balanced party. Is there anything else you wish to know? Yes, hints. Sword defeats bow. Yeah, so any, so bow, because bowmen are physically weaker as fighters, uh, they have usually will have lower defense, so usually swordsmen are just going to just destroy bowmen when, if they get in close quarters. If, you're, if your bowman is getting hit in close quarters, you're doing something wrong, or you shouldn't be letting your bowman get hit. Bow defeats air. Yeah, bow does a lot of damage to air units. Um, same with like sword against air. So, and air defeats sword. Um, I think it's just more of a like how high they are and all this other stuff. Now, sword can defeat air. It's just you don't do as much damage as a bow would. Armor is strong but slow. Mages are weak but wise. Monks use wood and claw. Um, yeah, armor has really high defense, but your your movement rate gets reduced. Um, but they are highly susceptible to magic, so. Majors are going to be excellent against heavy, heavy armor dudes. Uh, yeah, ma majors are definitely weak. You do not want them in close quarters combat if you can help it, because they're just like glass cannons. And monks are kind of like priests that use sword that use weapons. It's kind of weird, even though they're called something else at a later level. But uh, I kind of not the biggest fan of monks uh, overall. But I'll, for the sake of showing everyone off, I'm gonna, um, I'll definitely show a monk off when we get to that point. Always remember these basic rules before you gauge your foe and lower. Yeah, and pretty much that's it for the dojo in terms of like what he gives you. That never changes for the rest of the game, which I guess you don't technically need more information of it. And legend. Tro underwent severe trials to master the seven powers of war. If you seek the true power, you must undergo the six trials known just as Taroa. Tar Taroa. Remember that each door must first be unlocked by a key. Hmm. Why would he mention that? Interesting. Well, let's just say we're gonna be we're gonna be finding some keys later on. And then we can advance. Well, we can't advance, but this is how we advance. And then we just choose. But we won't. It'll be a few episodes before. Actually, it depends on how long the battles and how long our ramble takes. So, like I said, this game isn't going to be long, but it's going to be long because I'm going to ramble a bit. So, anyway, let's go to the security force lodge and turn in our turn on our dude, as well as uh, get our next mission, I guess. See how things go. There might be some slowdown on the load screens every once in a while, but I don't remember the loading being too bad in this game for the most part. It's pretty focused. Oh, I love the, I love this theme as well, the uh, kind of the uh, headquarters theme or whatever you want to call it, or the report theme. I don't, I don't know. The, I'll have to look it up what the actual name of this is. That concludes my report. I see. Well done. Now let's take a good look into the background of this zoot gatch. I agree. As always, the big guy gets away, the truth gets swept under the carpet, and only the small guy gets screwed. Hey, you're out of line. Hmm. Hmm. You're right, there are lots of things wrong with this government. Corrupt politicians, oppressive taxes, not a police. The rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. Sounds like something else in real modern times. If you, it it just goes to show because in the in, out in the intro they talked about how these people fought against the royals because they were debaucherous, got more more powerful, had money and all this other stuff, and yet things have gone all the way again. It's almost like humans have a weird conception of like wanting to rule over others and power and all this other stuff, and it's just a vicious cycle that goes on over and over and over again. History repeats itself quite often. But no matter how filthy things get, as long as we remember who we are, we the people have the freedom to change things for the better. And it's that freedom that so many people died for 15 years ago. Yeah, you'd think this game would take place way after the, like, the revolution or whatever, but no, it's not that long at all. I understand. I mean, it's part of the story, but you'll get, we'll get to it when we get to it. I understand. I had no right to mouth off like that. I'm sorry. No, it's all right. In any case, you all did a fine job. Why don't you relax a little? Well, thanks, Clive. I think his name's like Clive Beckett is his full name, if I remember correctly. Yeah, he seems like a nice guy. For a boss. How about we head to the tavern for a drink? And for the most part, every episode, I'm going to try to get story base as well as combat out of the way for the most part. So you'll always have some action every episode. There shouldn't be any reason for me to have a whole episode of me just talking, like, and talking to characters. The game's pretty quick. Uh, 
uh, the game pretty much tells you like what you need to do, the the exposition, the, the required exposition, and then on to the next objective. You know that type of thing. So. I thought it would get better after the war, but now everything is taxed and you can't walk on the streets at night. Hmm. The streets are filled with criminals and our council's filled with politicians who only care about patting their own nests. And now it's daily terrorist threats? What's going to happen in this country? I don't know, like all countries, I guess. The terrorists killed Mr. Smetana ahead of the council just three days ago, and they say it's the work of the old royalists. If they asked me, it could have been any of a dozen different groups. I'm just surprised it didn't happen sooner. I think the game describes what the royalists are, but the royalists are basically the people who were in charge before the liberation. And I think that discusses it later, but I'll talk about that when the game actually mentions it. If Eris were here to see how things have turned out, what would we say? I don't know. He just disappeared all of a sudden. Help! Somebody! Riot! Oh, and as you can see, his eyes like twitching as, a, as you wait. What? Calm down and tell us what happened. A riot broke out in the Dover District! Dover District? AKA the Royal Ghetto. But they hate bloodshed. They're always the first to negotiate. That's the terrible part. The army decided that the royals were behind the assassination of Smetana, and they came to take away count, uh, take the count, uh, take count Claymore away. Things are getting tense. The nobles gathered around the soldiers. Then there was some shoving. Someone drew a sword. He has a sword. What kind of fool? Let's get over there right away. Well, we have to, right? We're security, so otherwise we wouldn't be doing our job. So, all right, let's head over to the Dover District. Obviously, you probably want to save. But it's not like, like I said, there's not like a big level difference or anything like that. So, and you can save at the beginning of a battle anyway. So, yeah, whatever is more comfortable for you, I guess. Then we got a little, yeah, the now loading screen. Yeah, that, see, that didn't take very long on the little fairy. The fairy only appears for casting a spell. So, these are the advanced troops. Whoa, those guys look bad. Whoa! Holy cow! Oh yeah, I guess I can curse him. Ah, right. oh, yeah. Look at the, look at the damage on the dudes. Like they have blood and a big cut. We surrender. Surrender to death. Sorry, I wasn't talking about getting cut. Yeah, see, and then they have a, a death or they have a death like scene or, or like a model. Uh, by the way, all the characters have that too. They have a a normal model in combat, and then they have a if they're killed in combat. I might try to show off all their different models at from the point of the game. And for the most part, I'm not gonna try to die in combat because that. You don't really want to have that happen because then you lose that experience and all this other stuff. But I might, maybe I'll show like a, like a one battle where just everyone gets killed and just to show that off. But barbarians, man, those crimson guard are badass. Crimson, crimson guard, crimson guard, special anti-terrorist forces, an elite fighting force formed uh, by the well-known right winger Hell Spites. They're famous for being ruthless with terrorists. This is too much. Troops assemble. You know what, if I could do a Patrick Warburton voice, that's who I'd be doing for Kane, but... Well, if it isn't the security forces, what are you doing poking your little noses around here? It's dot, dot, dot. You know, I know you, you lash Lambert. The son of a traitor becoming a platoon leader? What a joke. Yeah, I'm almost going into Diego voice territory. I want to do Patrick Warburton, but, you know... What'd you say? You scum. Stop it, both of you. But Ash! I'm talk. Always oh, trying to sound like a sane, aren't you? As you can see, we clear the area of enemies. Some are still holed up in that church. We have business elsewhere. So as long as you're here, you can take care of those left in that church. So make sure you do a good job. You. Why don't they just finish the job? They could easily do it. They're higher level than us, man. That lousy creep. Yes, but what are we gonna do, Ash? Let's go and see if they will if they'll surrender. It looks like there's are no enemies around, but well, extra guard. Yeah, no enemies at all. It's not like we're in a battlefield or anything like that. So and it's not like these uh guys and summon monsters. Whoa! Where did they come from? They just popped up out of nowhere like a goddamn jack in the box. Where did these monsters come from? Yeah, you mean both, Diego. You've been summoned by a powerful mage. We're gonna have to cut through them. Yeah, they got summoned conveniently. So one of the royalists in there knows of this. Summon magic, apparently. Victory, arrival at the church, defeat of Ash. Yeah, obviously. I think 
I think like 90% or actually I think 100% of all battles are the death of Ash is one of the defeat conditions. So, all right, we got two new enemies for this one. We got War Ghosts, which are their first introduction to flying units. Yeah, you know they say air or sorry air units or what they're called. Yeah, definitely a bit a bit of a jump from the the thieves and stuff like that from the previous game. But luckily, with if as long as you've upgraded everyone's equipment, which you should have. I don't know why you would just kill Zoot Gatch right off, but okay. Um, so yeah, we got the War Ghosts. And they don't have, as far as I know, they really don't have any special skills outside of just flying and attacking. They're kind of annoying because they have a really huge uh, movement range. Um, yeah, if you press uh, one of the buttons, uh, see, I think on my controller, it's circle. Um, is Yeah, it'll show their movement range, so it can kind of give you an idea of like where they're going to be moving around. Um, yeah, this guy's going to be annoying because pretty much he's going to attack you no matter what. Probably for this one, you want for to not take too much damage for this guy. You want to have everyone back faced to the enemy. Um, probably the way you want to do it is probably have. Um, let's see, what's uh, hold on, what's his move range again? Oh, you think this whole fight would be us like avoiding the enemies from like going around uh, like hiding behind buildings and stuff like that? No, the enemies are gonna straight up attack us as soon as we get to the point. So it's almost like, well, there goes some semblance of strategy. Yeah, this game isn't perfect, but uh, I still love it. All right, well, anyway. Um, okay, so as long as I don't do that, I'll be fine there. Um, see, we don't need to get the chest. Oh, right, this game has chests and stuff like that. All you have to do is attack him, and they'll open. Um, okay, if I put... I move back here. Should be able to. Hopefully that's enough room. Okay, good. I just want... I want Ash to be targeted first, is pretty much what I'm trying to do. Um... Oh, and the, on this map, the two secrets are here and here. And then the chests are the one over there and the one over there. The uh, victory conditions are getting everyone to step on these. I think it has to be just this whole section here. Like, a character has to be standing on the spot. And it has to be all of them. It can't be just, like, one person. So, anyway, let's turn over. And this fight should go pretty, pretty quickly for the most part. Then I'll have uh, Clint um, take out the dude. Because, like I said, we need to have Clint be... Uh, or, no. Yeah, see, they just they just charge after us. So, like, the first fight, you're pretty much just going to... Like, you might be able to avoid, like, a lot of hits or whatever. This is a pretty filthy place for nobles to live. After the war, their est estates were confiscated. And a special tax was levied on them. Can't even vote. Just as the Asha Ash Ash dynasty did. You're oppressing them just for being who they are. Politicians always make the Wheaton Society pay for others' mistakes. Or others' mistakes. What would make anyone want to fight back? Well, a lot of things, really. You know, loss of greater glory, and so forth and so on. You know, yada, yada, yada. No. Um, okay. So we want to have... And don't go for... It. Don't worry about the chess. Because, like I said, the fight only ends when you get to a certain point in the map. So don't even worry about, like... Um, uh get in the chest until enemies are completely gone um yeah the problem with this guy moving where he is is that um you can't hit people on a on a map to, on, on a certain thing but because of a height difference i can't actually shoot over that so that's kind of annoying i probably should have moved him um i could kill him right here the only problem is is i hate attacking straight from the front because of um um because the the chance to block is high but if I move out too far, they'll all gang up on Diego. And I don't want his back to them. So, oh well. I was about to say, Diego should, even without the web, the new weapon, he should be able to one-shot them. Um, so. Let's see. They did... How much damage did they do to you? They did 12. So he could take two hits, even from the back. Um, so. And he shouldn't be able to straight-up kill them, so... Now, you probably don't want to risk it too much, um, but he can take the... I, I, even with critting, they shouldn't do any extra, super extra damage. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of want, like I said, because of Ash's level, you want him to take the hits um, or do the distraction. Okay, yeah, there wasn't... I didn't think they were all going to attack Ash, even though they should, but whatever. You should finish him off. Yep. Yeah, this is the level where... This is the level where... Uh, Diego gets a it gets a level quite quickly, quite easily too. 
Yeah, that, like I said, a lot of early battles are going to go by pretty quick, because we only got the three units. We have to release that drawbridge. If we examine the switch, it should release it. Yeah, basically the game mechanics tell me, like, hey, listen. Uh, okay, so yeah, they go six now. Um, and let's have you finish him off, even though it probably should be Diego, but whatever. Ha! Alright, anyway. And we'll just grab, gather the items and then continue on. And then we'll go ahead and heal Ash so we can get the experience for that. I think it, let's see. Did his AP go up? Yeah, his magic went up, so we can now level. You usually want to try to, like, have Ash use up all of his MP by the end of the fight so you can kind of get the most experience out of it, but that's up to you on how, how worried you are about um, levels and stuff like that. I mean, if you want to kind of min-max it. But I wouldn't worry about that too much, especially if this is your first time playing the game, so. All right, let's get this one. Should be an herb, I believe. Yep. Uh, good for good for us to, to spend 200 gold on that. And then we'll examine this. And we get, yep, we get the longbow, so we didn't have to buy it. So that saves us, um, saves us like 100 gold or something like that. So there you go. All right. Yep, and a lot of turns are going to be us just move in here, at least the beginning ones. Like I said, this game definitely doesn't have perfect fights and everything like that. There's a lot of downtime in certain in certain combat situations, but I wouldn't change it. This this game just this game just has a lot of charm. I don't, I don't know, folks. It's just just something about it just uh, at least how I feel. Anyway. Uh, actually, since it's going to take Clint a hot minute to get over there, I'll well just have Ash, Ash or Diego go get that switch. Just a waiter, waiter, fun little turn. And actually, didn't take him that long to get over there. That'll be able to get there by the time. Oh, and you don't want to stand like right as soon as that, as soon as you flip that switch, you don't want to have everyone stand in front of it because the archers have bows. So obviously, if you switch it and then stand in front of it, they're gonna use their turn to snipe you. And you usually, like I said, you usually want to have that be um, Ash taking the hits if you want to, so you can. Uh, mushroom, that, I think poisons, I believe. Um, I'll delete that up here in a second. Um, let me, I'll check that really quick. I was, like, some of the items, because you don't get a lot of these, like, very regularly in the game, so it's like, you kind of almost forget that you have, like, I think last time I played, I just stuck those in the, in the, in the, um, yeah, poisons. Um, I just stuck them in the, uh, uh, um, the uh, like supply depot or whatever that I forgot about them because of uh, um, because I almost never use them. Um, you probably want to use them on bosses and stuff like that. Obviously, um, the poison one I I'm trying to remember if it's guaranteed to hit or not. I know the hold one isn't. Um, shouldn't be able to archer me from there. So we'll just leave Diego there. You know, if, if if gold was pretty plentiful in this game, like really easy to acquire, I probably would um, um, I probably would buy herbs and always heal every single time, but the thing is um, because of the... Actually, maybe I should have asked, had Ashby standing out there so that way they would have attacked him so I could have gotten the experience for that. Oh well. Um... Uh, and yes, technically, if I want to want if I want to kill him immediately, I would just have um, I wouldn't even have Diego go. I'd just have Clint go up and smack him. But I want the I want to like keep the experience kind of. Oh, one well, of the few times Diego blocks, not often, but he can't do it. Um, it's just always surprising when you see someone that usually doesn't block block. It's more surprising when you see the oh, ha. Ah, yep, there's that little function. Oh well. And then I'm just gonna have Ash. I don't wanna have Ash get the experience if I can help it. I can I can take a couple hits from these guys, so um, yeah, the well I block an attack and archer blocks an attack, so what else is new? Unfortunately they're probably gonna attack Clint, I bet. Which is kinda of Yeah. Oh well. Ow. I have to uh Do 
this. Well, I was hoping to get a Ash like hit so he can gain. He can't. Unfortunately, Ash can't heal if he has no wounds. So you can't do the whole heal him and then just like um, just keep doing that to waste your MP or whatever. Oh. Well. Yeah, I probably should have, what I should have done is had Ash stand in front of the bridge, take the hits, heal, and then, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go after uh, Clint. He won't kill him, but he'll do a decent amount of damage. I wonder if I, nah, I better not risk it. Like I said, I don't have to min-max that badly. Um, what's this, what's this, my two? Uh, maybe I should have Ash. Now I'll, I'll have Diego get the kill, finish him off. Or not. I wonder if I can... I might actually be able to... Uh, see if I can... Let's see if I can get... Because uh, his range shouldn't be that high. Yeah. Oh, and Diego will probably kill him anyway from a counterattack. Well, there you go. I was kind of hoping they would have... Oh. Oh, because of his height. Yeah, that makes it. All right. Man, I'm weirdly just getting unlucky with the uh, um, blocking and stuff like that. There we go. If he healed himself, it would be a little bit. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, I probably didn't do that battle as efficiently as I wanted to, but yeah. And yeah, pretty much now that they're dead, you think the game would automatically end, but there it is kind of important that not all battles end immediately. Um, upon killing enemies because like I said chest and stuff like that there's other mechanics that go into it that um, yep we got an herb so but yeah if herbs didn't cost so much or if, if um, at least in the early game you know having a decent amount of money wasn't important I would I would easily use herbs every fight to get that little bit of experience but alright now yeah unfortunately the rest of the turn is basically us just getting up here so Let's just uh, get through as quickly as we can. Um, as far as I know, there isn't like a quick switch button where it just it immediately takes you to the next a dude. They don't start doing that till like late PlayStation 1, PS2 era. So, um, oh well, not a big deal. All right. Oh, and uh, well, let me finish this up and then we'll go from there. All right, final turn. Yeah, usually battles don't take that long, but I'm just prattling on too much. Alright, now we're going to see my second favorite scene in the game. Well, favorite in terms of, like, what the cinematography of it, if that makes sense. I think it's kind of cool. Um, but, I, like I said, nostalgia is a heavy drug in this game for me. I'm probably blowing the awesomeness way out of proportion. But, for me, I like it, so... They just got sticks with nails in them! How are they even a threat? Well, I guess, I mean, if have you ever gotten hit in the head with a bat with nails in it? I assume it's not pretty. You're surrounded. Drop your weapons. We don't want any more needless bloodshed. Huh. He must be a king or a noble. Why? He hasn't got shit all over him. You mean that, don't you? Of course I do. Don't listen, Count. He's a blood drinking devil. But if we continue, everyone will die. Excuse me, Count, but how can you trust these soldiers that just slaughtered us? This peace needs to begin somewhere. Oh, by the way, they never explain who summoned the monsters, by the way. Just some some wizard did it. Yep, pretty much. Also, this man seems different than those crimson murders. I'll give him a chance. We surrender. Huh. Yeah, see, we're the good guys. You know what I yeah, we we'll just round up all. The yeah, they just disappear because we can't have too many uh, objects on screen. I'm Ash Lambert, Ishtarian Security Force. Thank you for your quick compliance. My name is Roland Claymore. This riot is my responsibility. Please do not blame anyone else. We have laws here. It's not for me to decide. But I will report that you offered us no resistance. Resistance is futile. <laughs> um, 
That's right. Stop right there. I keep changing his voice. Who's there? Oh, it's Kane. Yeah. Man, those guys look intimidating. Hopefully, we'll never have to fight them. The Crimson Guards have come. The Crimson Guards have come back. He says that kind of. He doesn't have an exclamation point. He's just a period. It's more of a, just a statement. Statement of fact. Nice job for a bunch of weaklings like you. But we'll assume control from this point on. Or maybe that son of a traitor wants to take credit for this. I want no credit. Do as you like. Well, I mean, aren't they your prisoners? So you need to take them to the prison or whatever. I think this is a simple case of military versus, uh, like, like a simple case of the police versus the military, you know. And in this case, the military has apparently supersedes the, the security force or police or whatever. There you go. I will. Which one is Claymore? Hmm? Why do you ask that specifically? Oh yeah. Good. Come over here. Okay, I mean, I guess he's the head, and then you arrest him or whatever. I have no need for those. Kill them. What? You monster! No! Not the... Oh! Oh, God. Oh, God, the humanity! The humanity! Oh. Yeah, I don't know why I like that scene, because even though we see them kill people on screen, but the fact that it pans the camera away, or they run off screen, and the blood just comes off the side of the screen, I don't know why, just something like... Just something about that just screams, I wouldn't say epic, but, you know, just forceful or something like that. What have you done? And I just slaughtered all four of them. Yep, yeah, dead bodies all around. Murder! I won't forgive this. Forget this. Kane, you bastard! So, the traitor finally shows his colors. Good, I've waited across swords with you for a long time. Whoa, what type of sword is that? Looks more like a katana or something like that, because that's not a straight long sword. Stop it, you two! Commander Beckett. Oh, that's how you find out his last name is. Stop, you both swore to defend this country. Leave us be, old man. Walk away, old man. You best watch that mouth of yours, Kane. The Crimson God is already enough trouble with the council. More trouble, even your dad, how spites won't be able to help. Save your hollow threats for something else. For someone else, well, be a big man and forget your rude words to me today. However, I'm taking this old blue bud with me. And I guess, like I said, military has probably higher priority here than the police or security. And you, you get my what I'm referencing. I'm going to call him security and whatever, but still. Damn him. I know a few times Ash gets mad in the game. Because for the most part, Ash seems to either be sad or pensive or neutral. Very rarely does he straight up get mad. You know, he's one of those types of... He's not like your standard male protagonist uh, that, you know, like Japanese protagonist that gets, like, heated all the time. He only gets heated in the circumstances that kind of need it, you know what I mean? Thanks for staying cool, Ash. Thanks for staying cool, Ash. It'll be fine. I mean, the guy just murdered a bunch of... It, well, I mean, I don't know if they killed anyone, but they still, that was... They they had given up. Prisoners of war and all that. Geneva Convention! The next day... This episode might be a little bit long, because there is a little bit of story stuff before we get to a, a move-around scene. I should have finished that fight a little faster, but... Excuse me, sir. Hmm, who's that person in the corner? Nah, he's probably no one. Oh, you must be Ash. Is that the voice I want to give him? You know what? I think I'm going to give him the, the classic voice. Ash, uh, Ash, this is Dolph Crowley, a representative from the Young Revolutionary Party. Nice to meet you. Dolph has been sent out as a mediator to deal with yesterday's incident. Hmm. I understand exactly how you feel, Ash. The Crimson Guard were completely at fault in yesterday's massacre. Normally there would be need for a mediator in a case like this, but there are a few complications. As you know, the Crimson Guard are the pet project of Hell's Spites. The Minister of Defense, Hell's tactics may be questionable, but his power and influence in the Council are not. I personally think that he is a dangerous man who needs to be watched. Yeah, you guys probably saw this coming with the voice I gave him. <laughs> I don't know why I do that, folks. I'm not trying to do it on purpose or anything. I'm just... It's, just, it's one of my easier voices to do. And it's not a good voice, I'm just saying it's one of the easier ones I can do. 
council members are competing to become head of Hellspites and Ronaldo Castile, who, as you know, the hit... Oh, they use the as you know line. That is terrible writing. One of the few flaws in this game is when you say as you know, that's terrible writing to tell the audience what we know, but they know that already. You don't need to say that. Sorry, I, I'm going to get off my hard horse now. Who, as you know, is the head of the domestic security forces? Your plus. See the pattern? You're saying it's more than just a personal grudge between us and the Crimson Guard. Do you think it could be escalated in confrontation between the DSF and the Army? Well, let's not be overly pessimistic. We, but we still need to act swiftly to avoid future trouble. So, what do you want us to do? As punishment, we'll send you on leave away from your policing duties here in the capital. But that's just to establish your cover. The truth that I have uh, is that I have a top secret assignment for you. Hmm. Why does this sound all a bit weird? Nah, I'm probably, probably overthinking it. So what's this top secret mission? Do you know who General Magnus Dunbar is? Oh yeah, we saw him during the intro. Of course, the greatest hero of our country. Why? He's also second in line behind Hell in the Defense Ministry. I was actually originally going to give Clint the Russian accent, but I don't know why I decided to go with the snake accent. Oh well. Well, three months ago, he went to Gilbaris Island with a squad of hand-picked soldiers, and he hasn't been seen since. Hmm. What do I have to I need to touch that, like, shiny stone or whatever it was. And... Gilbaris Island. And the Gadar Sea? Why? I don't know, but I've heard rumors that he was acting on secret orders from Hell who was planning a coup d'etat. Really? Wow. Well, I guess with things as they are, I guess people are just power-struggling right now. That guy is out of control. That yeah, sounds like it. He wants us to investigate that, huh? Hmm. But Magnus is known for a sense of justice. I don't think you just blindly follow Hellspite's orders. Yeah. This makes this secret assignment makes me uneasy. I'm still not personally sure how much we can believe this Dolph, especially with a name called Dolph. It might be a wise idea not to accept this assignment. No, I'm gonna go. If we stay here, we may cause trouble for you. Been a good friend of me. Ash, that's not why. How'd you assign here? Of course, I know that, but whatever Dolph's reasons may be, we can't ignore what happened to General Magnus. Mm, that's true. I want to take a vacation anyway. Yeah, this is gonna be a vacation you'll never forget, Diego. Let me just tell you that. I understand, but this is a dangerous assignment. I want you to be careful every step of the way. Mm, we will. I shouldn't. I shouldn't lose any characters over the course of. And no, this do game doesn't have like permadeath or anything like that. Just you just don't want characters to die for obvious reasons and stuff like that. So, yeah, it looks like the royalists has been taken out, taken out to the, taken out to the curb and stomped with their teeth out. Yeesh. But uh, to get us out of the way of the political, political mumbo jumbo, we're gonna be sent off to find Joe Magnus. Who will we find along the way? Some strange uh, strange enemies and new characters? Find out next time in the next episode of Vandal Hearts. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.